Hey there YouTube, I'm Ikitsu, this is the Ikitsu Times, welcome to my channel, welcome to a little bit of Total War Warhammer 2. So, um, yeah, I ended up scrapping that other playthrough for a couple of different reasons, primarily because I screwed up my save files, but, uh, that's the danger of playing on, uh, Iron Man mode. But, uh, also because I screwed up some of the mechanics of it, I didn't really understand some of them. Um, one of the other things that we're actually going to be doing here, um, is something that's a little bit gamey because I actually know what's going to be happening happening here. So we're going to take a look over at our lords that we could potentially get here, and we're actually not going to be using these um, in a permanent sense. We're actually just going to go ahead and grab up this princess who's indolent because that's the least um, harmful of these, and we're going to start marching our way over to uh, Kalidor's repose. So this will get us access to that city um, and also completely kill my ability to build things because I have no money anymore. But that's fine. Um, so. What we did over here is basically the exact same thing that we did last time. Uh, we got some foreign trespassers here from uh, Safri, who are going to try to get to the Shrine of Azurian before I can, but they force march, so I can just walk over there and take it. Up yours, you scumbags. So yeah, there, there's a route that you can take where you actually get to the Shrine of Azurian before they can. Uh, the problem is that like they seem to have this sort of omnipotent sense, uh, or omniscient, um, omniscient sense as to where the hell all of these things are. So they just beeline to them and get to them before you can do anything about it, unless you know exactly what you're doing. Uh, same thing for this one down in uh, Kalidor's Reach. Uh, the Kalidorians will get to it, although it makes a lot more sense that they would know that Kalidor's Reach is abandoned, so uh, you have to follow this very precise bullshit to get there. Alright, so we got our rally field, now we can start working on technologies. Get through all this quest nonsense. Please stop. Stop doing that. Um, Alright, so we've got uh, the ability to do some... Um... Ooh... So I have to choose one that's going to cost me something pretty bad. Now, Unhappy Populace you should never ever take, but I do kind of wish I could take one of these other ones here. Especially uh, Advisor of the King is actually quite powerful. Um, but we're going to have to take this one. It's going to reduce our income by a little bit, but 10 influence is actually quite strong. Should be able to get more quests like that later on anyway. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and grab this up. And we've got just enough money to colonize it, so that's all fine there. It's going to unlock a full province for us, get us access to a bunch of other crap. And also, we can now take the Shrine of Azurian here. Um, upgrade that to the basic building, but also we can go ahead and enact an edict here. Rebuild Lost Splendor is the one that you want to do early on in the game. Um, we'll eventually, eventually want to get that uh, switched over, but for the next long, long time, that's going to be what we kind of have. Uh, we do need to keep some money in the bank, potentially, but not really that much. Um... This place actually is fine the way it is, so I'm not going to bother spending any money there. Let's go ahead and start working on military advancements. It's going to earn us a bunch of extra money, um, but that should be fine. Now, at this point in time, what we need to do is start force marching our guy from uh, there to Angariel to the Tower of Lycian, and etc, etc. So, let's go ahead and hit next turn here. So, our goal is just to sort of get a defined boundary and get ready to declare war on um, Kalidor, because they have a bunch of territory that we actually want to be getting. The nice thing about getting Safri all the way to the Shrine of Zirian there was that, like, they also spend a lot of time doing that, so now they have to run all the way across my other stuff, just like I'm going to have to run all the way across, but I've got another army to sort of head them off there. Alright, so let's give Avresi military access, I don't really care either way, but it's nice to sort of make them to be make them out to be fairly decent friends. Uh, just try and avoid getting into a war with Safri, they will kick your ass in the early game. Especially after you've taken the Shrine of Azurian. If you let them take the Shrine of Azurian, then you can destroy the army stack right after, but it's a little bit harder, and then um, it makes it take a really long time to take out Kalidor, which is sort of your next mission objective. So, um, And mission objectives for the Hives are actually quite important, since you get quite a lot um, out of it. Alright, so yeah, so you can see already that just following this, we've earned a whole ton of money here. Uh, next, we have to go ahead and get a hero. Got our technology research, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's go ahead and force march you guys over to the other city. And we're just going from city to city in particular because we want to make sure that we're still getting the um, replenishment rate as well as the public order. But we have to go all the way back down to Lothurn so we can sort of get ourselves our uh, other stuff back here. Alright, so we're going to go straight to Calder's Repose. I don't see any armies in reach here, so we can go ahead and treasure hunt. So let's see what we can do. Um, let's see here. Cautiously head into the ruins, knowing that many of the city's former inhabitants were lost in thrall to the Chaos Gods, and that in such places the ruinous influence on can often still be felt, as if by dark magic hidden within the basement of one of the buildings you find a shrine to Slanesh the Dark Prince himself. Uh, let's see here. Kill it with fire, purify the shrine, investigate the shrine. This seems like a terrible idea. Let's go do it. 
Let's see here. Chaos corruption in all provinces. Well, time to save scum the hell out of that, because that is not great. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so yeah, the, the obvious answer is the one that you want to do. Uh, you purify it, it gets you plus five public order in all provinces and untainted in all provinces. So I guess, sure. Why do you have to take the obvious answers? Why can't you take the fun answers in any of these damn things? Anyway, um, we've got enough money saved up that we can immediately go ahead and um, inhabit that place and then get rid of that particular general. And we'll even have a little bit of a happiness bumper for a little while there, so that's going to help, also help a bit. Got to redo these things here. Uh, let's go ahead and grab naval discipline. Um, actually, no, let's just grab archer prowess. It's going to be a while before I build my second army stack anyway, so it's going to be fine there. Let's see here. Settlement upgrades are available. Um, now, the thing is, I actually kind of want an upgrade if I can afford it, but I have to make sure I've got 1,500 next turn. I don't actually know that I'll have quite enough left over, so I'm going to leave that be. And we can always get the um, building upgrade a turn afterwards, which is fine. So the reason that we're going to get rid of that general afterward is because we're actually paying a significant amount of weird upkeep on that. Um, so we want to be able to get rid of um, that upkeep as fast as sort of possible. I might have to start bribing Kalidor with some of my influence here. Just so that they don't declare war on me to get access to Kalidor's repose. Only got one quest right now, which is kind of nice. Should actually check what that is. Enhance your city. That should be on the way already anyway. Or, unless it's the tier 3 one, I can't remember. Alright. Taranok is also trying to get in on this action. Just everyone is swarming to Galador's Repose. It's like, free city! Ah, And uh, I'm gonna get it, because that's what I do. Now, you could actually have a larger army to get it cheaper, but I don't find that to be overly necessary, because having that much army upkeep... Like, if you have an army standing around there to begin with, like I did with um, the Shrine of Azurian, that's fine, that's a different story. But if you kind of want to just pick it up and grab it, and it's somewhere out of the way, then having a single general by himself inhabiting it is actually perfectly fine. You just pay a lot more money, but uh, you pay a lot less money in the long run there. Alright, so I have to recruit a hero, that's fine. Enact the ritual, that's fine. Uh, more Winds of Magic, that doesn't really matter for me. Alright, so, let's get you guys running over to the Tower of Lycian. And let's get you guys to get me a city here. Alright, so, go ahead and colonize that. And we can also then go ahead and get rid of this general. So, we don't actually need her anymore. Um, she'll still be around, and we can actually recruit her for free later on. But uh, we won't be paying the upkeep for that, and we won't be paying the increased percentage amount, because we actually pay... Um, well, where the hell is it? Um, actually, I guess it doesn't list it if I've got uh, uh, only the one army. So, yeah, you pay extra upkeep for every army that you have on every army that you've got. So, like, it, it costs a lot more to maintain multiple armies than it does to just maintain one army. Seeing a decent amount of treasure starting to accumulate, but you kind of want to wait till there's an absolute crap ton of it out there, I find. But um, I'm also not seeing it sort of clustered together the way you would want it to be. Well, is that... No, that's an island. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and uh, skip this ahead. Population surplus in Aetain. That's fine. Now, I'm not going to have enough money to really do much for a little while here, and I probably have to turn taxes off in Kalidor's Repose, but... I probably should have done that last turn, in fact, but whatever. Shrine of Azurian, like a bunch of places I probably should turn off taxes, but um, yeah, we'll see We'll see how things go, I guess. This is the thing about taking this place, it means that you're missing out on a whole ton of money that you would otherwise have been able to use for investment. It's not great, but works out. In the end, usually, kind of, not really, I don't know. I guess I actually like, don't need to stamp out uh, taxation in Calder's Repose just because I've got that plus 5 morale, or that plus 5 public order. If I can fish for another plus 5 public order in an event, I'll probably take it as well. But I think we've actually got pretty decent uh, for the time being. Yeah, quest to destroy the Cult of Excess. Alright, so. Uh, at the very least, I kind of need this building here. So, we'll grab that. Get you guys down to Lotharn. 
And then next turn, we want a little bit of cash so that we can go ahead and recruit some more units and then fight these guys. That'll earn us a little bit of money and we'll be able to put that towards building stuff after that, so... Um, could also just demolish the Glittering Tower, but um, honestly, it's generally speaking not worth it. Foreign Trespasser, yeah. Um, I forgot to try and bribe Calador, but it looks like they're okay with me right now. These guys are actually heading towards Ivresi now. They're probably going to declare war on them. Uh, that's fine. I don't particularly mind that. It does make things a little bit more dicey since uh, Ivresi is a good trade partner, but does mean that when I do inevitably declare war on Safari, which I will probably be doing, it does make it a little bit easier because they'll be busy fighting uh, the forces of Avresi. And you do want to get at these guys fairly early, before they get into a war with Avalorn, because they will lose that war with Avalorn, typically speaking. Um, and it's just a lot easier if I can sort of wipe them out early, try and get to the at least the city with the gems attached to it. Um, but we'll see, I guess. Alright, so we have to engage the rogues. That's not going to happen. I don't know where the hell they are. Ooh, happy populace over on the Shrine of Vassarian. So, um, yeah, things are going pretty well here, actually. Um, I actually probably can just attack here uh, with my forces as is. But what generally tends to happen is that these forces move apart uh, during this turn, so um, I'm going to spend the turn getting three more units. I do have access to Lothran Seaguard, but I don't actually find the Lothran Seaguard without shields to be all that much better, so I don't bother with them. Um, so we're going to completely crush our own economy here, which is fine. Alright, I need to get uh, access to the plaza, so we don't have enough money for that quite. Um, just check here, Kaldor really does hate us actually. Ooh, and it's deteriorating. Alright, so yeah, we'll spend a little bit of influence on our entry at court with uh, Kaldor. Prove our relations with them. Got a nice plus 20. That should be enough to secure peace for at least a turn, hopefully, but you never know. This game's kind of a dick. Alright. But yeah, I, I do need to get to the point where I'm earning money, like, pretty soon. Looks like they're heading towards Taurus Sothai, uh, to Sothai so uh, anytime that happens, that's a good thing. It means not only is it less likely for them to attack me, but it also means that I don't have to worry as much about them... Um, Ooh, this is interesting. I don't have to worry as much about them uh, coming around and uh, getting their asses kicked by Tyrannoch, so... Because sometimes Tyrannoch does declare war on uh, Kalidor. Oh shit, they didn't actually uh, attack me. Or uh, move to raid. Move to raid is what they tend to do. Okay, um, I think what we're going to have to do is actually just attack them while they're at the Glittering Tower. Uh, go in for a single swoop and uh, hopefully kill them. Better, I find, to break this into a couple battles, attacking their um, army here, and then attacking Glittering Tower. Which tends to work a little bit better. That does mean I'll also be fighting, like, three fights instead of two. Alright, got our archery prowess. That's also going to help out. Um, let's go ahead and grab... Next up... Grab Spearwall next. Pretty good tech anyway. But yeah, so we're going to be outnumbered here pretty badly. Glittering Tower as well as a tier 2 city with some uh, interesting buildings there. Doesn't look like they've got the walls or garrisons or anything like that, so nothing too, too extreme. But let's go ahead and attack these guys. Looks like I'll take a bit of attrition. Should be okay, though. Yeah, it was too short of a, a walk to actually take that much attrition. Alright, so they should be appearing to my back and to my right, so I'll have to camp in the there left corner. But that's perfectly fine. I don't particularly mind doing that. So anyway, I'll get to you guys once we get to the battlefield. Alright, so I'm going to be a tremendous jackass here and I'm going to corner camp, which I would never do against a real person, but the AI isn't a real person, so screw them. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get back into our corner here where it is nice and safe and we won't have to worry about horrible things moving around our flanks because that's apparently how the world works. I don't know. Um, I think that we can get actually just to about here and still be fine. So the one problem that we're going to run into in this particular way is that like we're probably going to end up getting hit by both of these armies at about the same time-ish. This one should be a little bit further ahead, but that does mean I'm going to be firing at them out of sync, which is not ideal. I think I'm also sort of angled the wrong way here. 
Um, mm, this is probably actually an okay enough angle. Um, yeah, so the bolts are going to be pretty important here. Eagle to sort of, um, well, do this, but this is probably not exactly the best thing. I always call this an eagle. It's not an eagle. It's a flamethrower phoenix. It's much, much more impressive than a simple eagle, even though it's not really. Um, I mean, like, I actually do keep this around, despite the fact that normally I would get rid of something that has such a high upkeep, just because it fills such an interesting niche in this army, and that it can assassinate generals actually pretty well. That's primarily what I use it for, is to run the hell down uh, generals after a battle. Okay. So, how far away are these guys here? Still quite a distance. So the problem here is that they have got two reinforcing armies and, like, one regular army. The regular army will approach me because uh, I've got artillery, and the game is hardwired to approach an enemy that has got artillery. Um, I don't actually know what these guys are doing, so I'm actually going to just let this happen. Um, yeah, but one of the things you can do is sort of stop, make them stop with their crossbows to try and fire at your Flamestar Phoenix, and this sort of gums up their sort of army here, and they leave their crossbows behind and sort of march their infantry towards you in a sort of death line. In any event, let's go ahead and just speed this up a bit. I think they're just waiting until these armies both consolidate together or something like that. I don't know. Oh yeah, I'm on iron. I'm on legendary difficulty where I actually have to pan the camera based around where my units are. Uh, God damn it. Battle realism mode, you suck. Alright, let's just do this. Oh, I don't have to worry about this stupid bird anymore. Alright. I've got this not set to... Okay, yeah, the single single round is actually pretty okay under certain circumstances because it has high unit penetration, but um, this actually just does a ton more damage, so... Especially uh, useful against these Black Art Corsairs. Very, very good target for this thing. The Black Art Corsair handbows are kind of interesting, but they'll probably get shredded before they can really do anything too significant. Um, they're a very good unit all around, but not really that great in this sort of context. Their range weapon is just too short range. All right. So the main thing is I have to be able to get off these um, repeater Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower shots at the approaching army to soften them up for my sort of archer line to finish them off really quickly. And if I, as long as I can sort of do that, then the rest doesn't matter as much. Um, the other thing, though, is that I do have to get rid of this general somehow quickly, which is going to be a lot more annoying, because otherwise I have to start microing all my uh, archers. And I'm, I'm too lazy to do that, so that kind of screws me over. So let's go ahead and have Tyrion just run into the enemy uh, army here just all by himself because he can. Uh, that unit looks like it's dead, so... Yeah, so what's going to happen is this general won't break from um, the immediate missile fire, and so all my archers are going to slowly start uh, firing exclusively at him. Um, not ideal, is what I would say that is. So yeah, Tyrion, you just move him into melee combat, and he sort of absorbs all the enemy fire. One of the things that you can do is, like, you can take your archers and turn them on and off again, and that sort of resets their AI as far as what they target, and that means they'll stop targeting the enemy's general, which uh, you sort of don't want them to be aiming at the enemy general, really. Alright, so let's get Tyrion away. Once I've sort of got those missile troops, like, I don't want them getting kited, and I want them to sort of continue getting pounded by my own uh, missile troops here. So at this point in time, it's best to just run them away. I've got this uh, potion of speed, but I don't think we really need to use it here. Let's see here. Just about at the point where we want to switch this over to these guys, I think. They're a lot more sort of uh, clustered together as well, so it works out just as well anyway. Even though our archers aren't armor-piercing, this is still actually pretty damn good. Um, Alright, so let's turn them off and then on again. So that fixes problems. If it, uh, It's like a computer. Your archers are like a computer. Anytime you have to say that, there's something wrong with the game, but you know. Your archers are like the computer. You just, you just turn them back on and off again, and everything will be fine. Alright, here comes another general. This general is about to actually go down before it becomes an issue, so that doesn't really matter that much. Uh, we are below, like, half arrows, though, so I should probably turn this off anyway. Just wait till these guys get a little bit closer. We've got 29 kills on this thing already, and we've actually been damaging units rather than killing them. Alright. Oh. 
Uh, I guess we don't really need skirmish mode on either, anyway. All right, let's try and get around behind them with our eagle or our eagle um, here. All right, so we'll run him back into the fight here. We'll take our turkey and bring it to the back of their fight, actually. Ooh, that's uh, an interesting time to have done that. Let's go ahead and uh, do this. Let's try and uh, get a couple of units focusing on these guys here. I want them not firing at my units here as much as possible. Should be able to get a couple good bombing runs here, but this charge should kill this general as well. Yep, there we go. Get into the rear of some of these units here. Just keep firing into melee. Alright, you guys. Switch to there. Auto fire is actually working pretty well in this case, so don't have to worry too much about it. Ooh, we're running out of arrows here. Running out of arrows is actually real bad. Alright, looks like it didn't matter. We managed to get the kill there anyway. Barely any losses on our part as well, so that's all well and good there. Um, let's just try and mow down these guys as much as possible. These guys should be firing away at these uh, retreating units here. And we'll try and actually do some bombing runs over them, I think. Yeah, all our units are probably using up our ammunition pretty damn fast here. Yeah, out of potion. I was pretty sure I used it. wasn't entirely sure I'd used it, but I was pretty sure I'd used it. Alright. Damn it. Yeah, he's a little bit too good at dodging these, in my opinion. Considering how fiddly it is to actually fire these off. Alright. The weird thing is that you get veterancy for these kills, but you don't seem to get uh, credited kills, which is a bit strange. Alright, so let's just use the last of these and then we'll call this battle quits, but I do like running around bombing stuff like this. Alright, let's uh, go after these guys, actually. Do a bit of strafing run, line it up here. Eh, whatever. We're gonna miss that, but... Alright. Tear these guys apart a bit. Actually, tear these guys apart, maybe. Nah, nah, this is fine. I like how he just goes after the one dude and just, like, stomps all over him. It's a bit of a waste, but whatever. Okay. Yeah, I think we call it here. I don't think I'm gonna get that many more kills. Alright, perfect. So now I just have to get into two more fights that are basically like that, except they've lost all their troops. So, you know, we're talking about about 1,400 losses on their side to 47. So, you know, the ratio is a bit disparate as far as that goes. 227 kills on the Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower, which is kind of nice. Ran out of ammunition for virtually all my archers, which is also pretty nice. Um, these two over here just did not lend their weight, but uh, I guess I just had them pointed in the wrong direction or something. Tyrion actually got a decent 74 kills, which is pretty good for him. Um, I mean, it's nothing compared to if he had a bolt thrower that he was firing, but, you know, whatever. He also doesn't gain experience or veterancy, so screw that. Heroic victory. That's actually pretty rare in this game. I think you get a lot more experience for that as well. Alright. Well, either way. Yeah, high elves, uh, and the range, like, the range game for high elves in particular is kind of broken in this, but in particular, the AI, even on the hardest difficulty, is not particularly clever about how they go about, uh, dealing with, um, Tyrion. Um, 
if they just sent a couple of units after him and then, you know, kept him busy while they swarmed over your infantry, that would probably work a lot better than what happens, which is they try to swarm Tyrion, and it, like, seems to make sense in a sort of meta way where it makes sense to try and swarm someone's general, eliminate them quickly for that massive uh, morale debuff to the rest of the army, but in his case, he's so good at just soaking up and tanking damage that there's really no point to it, especially with what they're attacking him with, which is units that are not really good at killing a single infantry unit. They're you know, using spears and stuff like that. Um, and Corsairs, which are not armor-piercing. If he had Hargoneth Executioners, that would be a little bit different. Uh, the crossbows actually are also a little bit different since they can be quite good at killing him, but uh, not really the way they were using him. Alright, so that first army stack might, technically speaking, be dead. It's down to 93 troops. Uh, probably still around, knowing my luck, but hopefully it's technically dead. Alright, well, either way. Let's see how this goes. Dear game, please finish uh, finish loading. This is the last tiny bit here. How many troops were we up against there? About almost, almost 2,000. Not quite, but almost 2,000. Um, okay, interesting. Good to know that we can take out those sorts of numbers. Now, if they had a lot of crossbowmen, that would have been a lot harder, but, uh... Could go back up to full health, basically. That's worth, like, no money. That's impressive. Okay, I might as well order captives. Alright, so those guys get kicked over there. That's fine. Um, what I'm gonna want to do here is actually get into a fight over the Glittering Tower itself, since I don't think I can even move out of the circle radius here, so... Uh, let's go ahead and grab up. I still want to get to Draftmaster and then at the very least to um, Quartermaster. Um, if we can cap out Quartermaster, what we can eventually get to is the uh, Renowned and Feared. Elven Scholar is also quite good, but uh, we don't really need that as badly right now. Um, but Renowned and Feared and Quartermaster both like combined our 18% reduction to the cost of the units in this army. Uh, then you can reduce the upkeep by an additional 5% for um, Spearmen and Archers, and since he's Turian, he's already reducing the cost for Spearmen and Archers by 5%. And then you go ahead and you take Righteous Cause, which reduces it by minus 10% for all forces, including this one. So, he can get to be a ridiculous amount of, um, of um, reduction in upkeep cost uh, that just sort of goes crazy places. Uh, oops. So yeah, what I probably want to do for now is take something like um, Merchant Lord. So, I'm going to go with that one. After that, we go ahead and do another fight, exact same as last time, but much, much easier. I'll be back after the battle, because there's no way in hell that you guys want to see me just standing there firing at Dark Elves again. Alright, and once again, a pretty easy, clean sweep there. So, we are going to get an automatic attack, I think. Oh yeah, that's... 2,000 bucks is not really worth it there. Anyway, uh, we are going to get these guys automatically just ramming themselves to death against the Glittering Tower since they are bereft of other options at this point in time. So we go and uh, get ourselves these Straits of Lothurn, which is lovely. And uh, we get to tick uh, off Rebuilding Lost Splendor there as well. And we can also go ahead and get the Haven here. Um, I've got enough money at this point in time that I can do some interesting things, but uh, one of the things that I definitely need to do is get Kalidor's Repose upgraded with this. We need to get Angariel uh, upgraded at all. I forgot to actually do this correctly, so we actually have to demolish that. Which is a bit of a shame, but uh, whatever. I don't think I had enough money to get the building I wanted back then anyway. And uh, we want to get, I think, the Glittering Tower upgraded and then demolish this. So Glittering Tower, I find, needs to be a walled city, just generally speaking. That's probably not going to always be the case, but um, Glittering Tower does tend to sort of stick out like a sore thumb and therefore invite it getting attacked a little bit more than uh, sort of other things. Let's go ahead and grab Draftmaster here. I'm just going to make it so that we can get slightly better troops, but that's less important than the fact that we'll soon be able to start reducing the cost of our troops. Also gives us access to Lightning Strike, but that's honestly not that important. Um, I think at this point in time I can also get a hero. Um, who do I want to piss off, though, with that? Probably Kalidor uh, at the odds onset, and then move on to... I don't really know where, but... Let's see what we can get for heroes here. Oh, I can't do it in this province, right? I forgot I have to do it in the province that actually has this stuff. Let's see here. Prudent? That would actually be quite good. Then we got Squishy. Okay, so... Hmm. Definitely going to go with Prudent. I'm not going to be attaching him to an army for the time being, but... Gets us a little bit of stuff here. So yeah, if I get this guy over to um, 
Kalidor, I'll be able to start harassing the Kaladorians, which is going to be a great way for me to deal with this uh, particular quest. So off he goes, and it's going to take him a while to get there. He's also, you know, pretty expensive upkeep-wise, but that's perfectly fine. And I think we just go ahead and get ourselves an extra unit of spearmen and call it a turn. Uh, after these guys bounce off of us and explode, we're going to go over and start declaring war on Kalidor. And the thing is, I have to get them on an open field battle. I cannot fight them in Val's Anvil. But fortunately, their major army is in Tor Uh So if I can fight them around there, then we're in a good position. I wonder if Safri is actually at war with um, Avalorn right now or something like that. That does tend to happen. Um, and since they're retreating from Avresi, that means they haven't declared war on them. What I think would actually be ideal is if they declared war on Avalorn and actually started winning for once in their goddamn lives. I think I can auto-resolve this one safely here. I don't think I have to worry. Yeah. Didn't, sometimes you just lose a whole unit for some damn reason. This is definitely a moment where I just probably go with the uh, ex execute captives here again. Not only is it great for the diplomacy with other elf factions, but it also gets me uh, that little bit of experience points that's the same no matter how large or small their army is. So, faction destroyed, that'll get me a quest complete, uh, getting me access to a little bit more even. And... Alright, so, this should give us enough money to get uh, a little bit further along our way. We've now got the uh, Dragon Armor of Venerian quest here that's going to be required. Have to get a Promenade, which is a Tier 3 building, and we have to capture and occupy Vol's Anvil. And this is why we want to be uh, declaring war on Kalidor. Because, basically, the game tells us we have to. Uh, which is a little bit stupid, but uh, whatever. Alright, let's get uh, over to here as fast as we can. Should also help a little bit with our uh, public order problems over there. Glittering Tower over here. For now, we'll go ahead and gra grab up the, the plaza um, as being our best choice. The Shrine of Azurian over here. Going to go ahead and grab up the uh, Sacred Flame of Azurian. I probably could have actually just upgraded this place, but it's an immediate plus five, so it's a pretty big bonus right off the bat there. All right, so Tyrion himself over here. One of the things that we can start doing is taking Quartermaster and immediately reducing our upkeep by a small amount. So let's go ahead and grab that. Minus 3% for all armies. Uh, and then it's like 8%. And then I think it might actually be even 15%, but I can't remember for sure. So Dragon Armor for Anarian is uh, kind of okay. It's a decent armor set. What's actually really better is uh, Sunfang, because this gives you plus uh, 3 public order in all your provinces, which is a much, much bigger deal uh, out of the two of them. Uh, let's see here. It's going to be a while before I can finish that, but that'll get us access to another um, invocation, so I want to be earning money by the time that starts happening. It's just going to take a little while before we do. Now, at this point in time, I've got that sort of consideration in my mind that I can go ahead and just get that other general out and uh, run it over to these two treasures. Um, so I might consider that. How come, oh, right, she's not actually uh, in our reserve yet. I have to wait a few more turns before she returns. That's fine, though. Um, let's see here. All my buffs to, like, uh, morale and public order and everything like that have worn out, which is a bit of a problem, but we'll deal with it. So I kind of want to fight Kalidor away from their garrison. So if these guys could fight against White Peak or something like that, that would be ideal. Then I could take Torsathai and then... Um, take their army out and then go south where they've got uh, hopefully no defenses. But uh, we'll see how that sort of pans out for us. Sometimes they just sort of camp the hell out of places, sometimes they do one thing or the other. Let's see here. I think I have to get to tier 3 for this one. Nact Ritual, that one's actually a really bad idea. This one's also a really bad idea. Actually, I wonder if th is this one that I teleport to? I can't remember. All right, ready for duty. So now I could do that um, thing that I was mentioning earlier. Um, all right, we've encountered the pirates of Sartosa. Sometimes you can actually trade with these guys. Who calls? Minus seventeen. It's pretty bad. Make your demand. I will not obey. All right. Well, I think we'll just ignore that for the time being. Um, 
All right, our hero over here. Get you guys back to normal stance. Actually, I might want to force march this one. Are you guys actually at war with um? They might actually be at war with uh, those guys already, with Tyrannok already. Yeah, they are. Shit. Okay. Well, that probably means I'm going to actually have to war with Tyrannok to get the province secured. The alternative is I just don't bother with securing the province. But what I'm going to do is actually sort of move my way towards Vol's Anvil, take it really quickly, and hopefully that'll be fine. But... Uh, the real big hope that we've got here is that Torsathai actually managed to hold off against Tyrannox army. I don't think it will. Uh, they've got a 12 stack against what's going to be, I think, 11 maybe. So I think that it's heavily in favor of uh, Tyrannox there. Bit of a shame. Alright. Now, can I afford to go treasure hunting? 603. I think we can. The thing is, like, it's free to get this in the first place, but actually, I should actually also check something here. Uh, you generally speaking want to figure out what the 60s are going to be. Like, uh, efficient is not really that great. Minus 25% to upkeep for Archer, Spearman, Loth, and Seaguard, and Bolt Three units. Like, all that's kind of okay, but that kind of repeats itself with um, Tyrion. So I don't really need that. Energetic um, can be actually quite good for an explorer type. Avaricious uh, is not that great in my opinion. Hawkeye is actually kind of interesting, but uh, doesn't really do much for your army, so I don't particularly like that one. So I don't see any two great generals, but uh, that's fine. They sort of rotate out gradually over time anyway. Alright, let's go ahead and hit next turn here. What I'm hoping to do is hold off until I can get like that item that decreases your um, army upkeep by another 30%, basically make Tyrion's army free. War declared between Illyrian and Nagareth. That's interesting, actually. Oh, actually, there's two Kalidor stacks there. Oh, there's two Turnock stacks there as well. So, goodbye, Kalidor. Rip in peace. Or, yeah, yep, yeah, there they go. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to have to actually attack these guys, which is really unfortunate. Defensive alliance. Uh, I don't really want to get into a defensive alliance until those guys are in, like, 50 wars. Because, again, they get themselves into some pretty bad wars. They might be playing the diplomacy game a little bit better this time, though, and avoiding that. Hmm. Now, the thing is, like, I don't want to have to fight uh, Tyrannoch. Like, I really don't. But uh, we'll see if they can, if they're in any other wars. Because if they are, there's a decent chance they'll be able to fight them, kill their armies, take Taurus Thigh, and then peace out. And that's the ideal situation, is where we do that, get peace, uh, and be fine afterwards. Although, admittedly, I'm going to go piss them off right now anyway, so. Alright. So Kalidor should be wiped out from this attack here. Um, I don't really need to show you guys the uh, siege attack here. It's not really going to be too interesting. But um, yeah, we'll get through it. Uh, I can't really auto-resolve it because it'll kill off a whole crap ton of my units, but I'll get back to you guys once we finish. Alright, so yeah, that was incredibly simple. It, it always is actually to take out an unmanned garrison when you've got that many archers. You just sort of walk up. Tyrion, he takes a whole bunch of shots from arrows, and uh, then you just sort of walk in there. So, yeah, continuing along with the Quartermaster, doing some uh, purchasing with the fact that we earned a whole boatload of money from that. Uh, probably worthwhile get a, to get this Watchtower on Glittering Tower right now. That does make the garrison actually strong enough to hold off against pretty large stacks of enemy troops, in all honesty. We'd have to turn taxes off over here, uh, but we are trying to get ourselves some more buildings. This is actually going to do a plus seven public order swing, so we're only going to be at minus one once that uh, happens. Oh, we got this guy. He's got... Uh, we finished doing this thing, but we're going to actually just cap out the levels of specialist. Um, we did our hero action. It was just... Uh, Damn, uh, to steal uh, influence there. So, yeah, we got a little bit of influence out of it, but it's going to increase over time. Uh, the success rate, though, is by far the more uh, relevant part early on. Um, any event here? Let's see what we've got here going on. Kothik. Might be able to get a uh, non-aggression pact with them. Alright, so that helps a little bit. It doesn't really matter that much, but... 
It helps. Uh, these guys dislike me, probably because I've got a got a non-aggression pact. Um, so yeah, like I probably need to declare war on Tyrannok here. Uh, might make it so that Illyrian likes me, which is nice. Looks like these guys are in wars with several factions, though, so I should be able to get in there, take out Soros the Thigh, and then get out of the war. Um, that's sort of the hopeful part of me. And I'm really seriously considering getting our general to go out here, just hunting this sort of crap here, because uh, why not? So we've got this lord here that is currently free. Can go ahead and grab that. And we'll be heading out into the open sea where there's storms and all that other stuff for a couple of turns. Now we are losing about uh, like 500 in total prof uh, profits from this uh, endeavor, but I'm only going to have this character for like one or two turns. So hopefully that's going to be enough time for me to get out there and really uh, do some crazy stuff. I think I might have started off in the wrong city though. Um, I think I'm supposed to start off in Lothurn. I do dislike that this person has decided to step up to the plate here and try to, you know, do whatever the hell it is they're trying to do here, but I don't actually want to take, like, White Peak or anything like that is the problem. Um, the further you stretch along here, the more exposed you are to other wars that you don't really want to get into, so... Um, what I think they're probably doing is moving towards Illyrian, so... I don't actually know if they are, though, because they can't win a war with that stack uh, heading towards Illyrian, and there's no way for them to really increase their army unless they stand there for a million turns paying a million dollars to get double-costed troops, so... I don't think that's it, but it could be it. Alright, so... Ooh. This could be a really good way to get a lot of, uh... of, uh... influence for fairly cheap there. Um... And I think that's what we're going to do. I could actually go for the Happy Populace right now, actually. Ooh, actually, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to go with the Happy Populace thing here. It seems crazy, but I think it'll be worth it. Alright, let's go ahead and grab ourselves our Naval Discipline. It's going to be pretty important pretty soon. Actually, Trumpeteers we'll go with first. Alright, so yeah, I did this. I should have been in uh, Lothurn. Um... It doesn't matter hugely, uh, it just means it'll take me... Actually, it probably would have taken the same number of turns anyway, even if I started in Lothurn. Distance traveled wasn't huge. So, yeah, just have to get one of these to be worth, like, a decent amount for this to be worth it. Uh, that one's not really that much, so probably not going to have been worth it from that one, but hopefully this one will be, so... I don't know. Um, this guy we sort of keep as is, I think, and our army from down here... I kind of want to get towards Kalidor's Repose as fast as possible, but what I suspect we're going to do is go up this way, because I think these guys are going to continue trying to get towards um, Illyrian, and we want to crush their army mercilessly. So we should be getting a quest that says we have to build a stone thing, but I think that comes later, so we'll deal with that in some other future point in time. Um, don't need to move our hero there. Shrine of Azirian here. Um, do need to get access to the plaza, so we'll build that. That uh, actual cost reduction on buildings has paid off quite well there. Um, Alright. Kudos where kudos is due, I guess. Those level 1 plazas are actually super, super good, uh, just in general. We should be in positives next turn, I think. And especially once we dump our secondary general after we get that other uh, treasure. And then we just sort of wait and then we can sort of respawn her somewhere closer to like other stuff without having to worry about all that travel time. We can also get a bit of money because we're going to be attacking this uh, stack here next turn. What do you wish to discuss? They want to offer me 200 bucks to form a defensive alliance. Again, they haven't really gotten into any fights so I don't really care to get into any uh, defensive alliances with them. Um, that can sort of wait for later, but um, after they've gotten into a whole bunch of wars, it's actually a lot easier to do uh, do that sort of whole thing. Now, Illyrian controls the gate outwards into Tyrannoch, so if I could get some reason for them to start pushing outwards, that would actually be pretty good, but I don't think that's necessarily going to happen. All right. I think part of the problem is I'm also not taxing some of my provinces here. Alright, 
So hopefully this is like five or ten thousand bucks. Rampage was standard. Lost cargo, plus 30 growth and plus 10%. Okay, so the stacking plus income is actually pretty good. Rampage of standard is pretty bad, though. Alright. So, we're going to go ahead and just dismiss this person. And that should bring our income up by a decent chunk there, as you can see. Uh, not only are we getting that character's uh, money back, but we're also getting a bunch of other stuff. Go ahead and tax this place again, that's fine. I probably should have actually ran with this army. I think they're not going to fight me here, so what I'm going to do is sort of just move up to like here or something like that. I don't really know. Might even go into Calder's Repose. Get our uh, happiness back up to positives. I don't have any positive buffs, do I? Oh yeah, I do actually. Hmm, it's not ideal. Okay, well, either way. Back up to 1,266 though, so our income has done a nice turnaround there. Yeah, I should have forced March last turn. That would have would have helped a ton. Alright, and I think we're going to call it an episode here. I think I've, kept, I've said that like three times or something now, but I, I actually mean it this time. This game is just like that sort of sim thing where you just, just say one more turn, one more turn, one more turn. Uh, and then just keep playing forever. Alright, a little bit worried about what Safari's up to. But, ooh, are you declaring war on me? I hope you're declaring war on me. Oh, they have ended their non-aggression packs. That helps me a lot. Okay. I forgot that we had that, so yeah, it's it's nice that they did that for me. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. I should probably actually get my guy out here so that I can assault these armies, because these army stacks are a little bit really ridiculous, and I do want to fight Safri eventually. But hopefully what happens is they declare war on someone else first. Usually is what happens, because typically speaking, these guys are very unpopular. The biggest problem with these guys is that they do have uh, stacks of um, Swordmasters Hoeth, so those guys are just really, really tough. Alright. So yeah, I think we go ahead and declare war there. And that should be fine. Shrine of Azurian over here. Alright, so we've got plus two. I need to get, like, plus five more there, though. Because, um... Or I need plus three more to be safe here. So, it's going to be a little bit rough. One of the other things, I've got enough um, to do that, but let's see how much money I can get out of a fight with these guys. Hopefully it's enough. Let's just check our... I might be able to get something out of these guys for declaring war on them. This day gets worse and worse. What do you want? Alright, Tyrannok... Uh, what I want is a little bit of money. Apparently they're very weak economically. Might only be able to get like 300 bucks off this. I might not even be able to get anything, but... Um... Very well. Yep. Alright, so that helps out a ton. Uh, anyway, hope you found this video enjoyable, and of course, as always, hope to see you guys all next time.